Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new Windows 10 mini PC from ECS known as the Leva Q1. This is actually the Q1D. And this thing is super tiny. It's powered by a quad-core Intel CPU. We have 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. And given its size, we actually have some pretty decent I.O. on this mini PC compared to other PCs that have been released in 2020 and 2021. So along with the Leva Q1, inside of the box we're also going to receive a power supply. And I believe this is 12 volts, 2 amps. So we have a 24 watt power supply. This isn't going to pull 24 watts. Comes with a pack of different wall adapters from around the world. And a VESA mounting plate with screws. So taking a look at the front of the unit, we have two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, and our power button right here on the front with a little LED indicator right in the middle. Over on the left hand side, we have a micro SD card reader, and I've only tested up to a 256 gigabyte card, but it does read that. And around back, we have our power input, gigabit ethernet, full size HDMI, and a full size display port. So we can do dual displays out of this unit at any given time. And just to give you an idea of the size, here's the Q1 compared to a Raspberry Pi 3. I mean, as you can see, this Windows 10 mini PC is absolutely tiny. So as for the specs, we have a quad-core Intel N4200, base clock of 1.1 GHz with a burst up to 2.5. The built-in GPU is the Intel HD 505 up to 750 MHz. 4 GB of non-user replaceable LPDDR4 RAM running at 2400 MHz. 64 gigabytes of internal storage. It also has built-in AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. And this one actually came pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. Now before we jump right into some testing, I did want to take this thing apart real quick and give you a look at the internals. So I'm going to pull the bottom off here. And by the way, this is an actively cooled mini PC, so it does have a fan built in, but it's super quiet. If I'm a foot away from it, even at full boat, I can't even hear it. So yeah, the bottom pulls right off here, and there's really no upgradability to this mini PC. We cannot replace the RAM, we can't add more, we can't add an SSD or anything like that. So you're stuck with what you get from the factory. But this is using that uh, stackable PCB like we've seen in other mini PCs recently. So one is basically an I.O. board, the other one contains the CPU. Just to give you a look here, this is the cooler that they've added. It's got an aluminum heatsink with that blower style fan, but like I mentioned, it is really quiet. Alright, so here we are with Q1. I got a few things that I wanted to test out here. As you can see, we have that Intel Pentium N4200 at 1.1 GHz with a burst up to 2.5, and it does go up to 2.5. 4 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 MHz. Like we saw, this is non-user upgradable. And the built-in HD505 graphics. So I was really hoping that they would have put something like the 4125 in here. But for what this can be used for, it actually functions way better than I thought it would, given that this is an older Apollo Lake instead of Gemini Lake. And before we get into testing, there was one thing I wanted to show you. We'll open up hardware info. Usually these are limited to around 6 to 10 watts on short boost TDP and long boost TDP. But as you can see here, this one is unlocked. So we have our power is unlimited and time is unlimited. It doesn't mean that this thing's going to pull 400 watts. It doesn't even mean that it's going to pull 21 watts. Usually these are around 15 when they're unlocked. But what this does allow it to do is work at its maximum clocks on the CPU and the GPU for as long as it can until the thermal throttle kicks in. But since we have a pretty decent little cooler in here, I think we'll be good to go. Really glad to see this because like I mentioned, a lot of these companies with these smaller PCs limit this to around 6 to 10 watts. So first things first, let's test out some web browsing. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network here. We do have AC Wi-Fi built in. We'll just head over to ECS's website. Everything loads up pretty quickly here. Let's go to system. And we'll just find the Q1D. That's what we're taking a look at in this video. I mean, for web browsing, no issue. I mean, these little chips have always handled it really well as long as you have a good internet connection. We are at 1080p on the monitor, but I'm at 125% resolution scaling, just so you could see it a little better in this video. So when it comes to web browsing, shouldn't have any issues with this thing. Let's head over to YouTube and check out some 4K video playback. Okay, so I wanted to let this buffer a little bit. Uh, up here we have stats for nerds. I'll just show you that we are at 4K here on YouTube. I'm actually really impressed with this little box and 4K video streaming. 
We got five initial drop frames, but throughout I've only seen a couple extra drop. And even with the newer 4125 CPUs that do clock up higher, I've seen worse performance, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Like I showed you at the beginning, this isn't being limited to like 6 watts or 10 watts, it's kind of unlimited, and it's, it's not going to go up much higher than 15 through anything, but it's doing a great job with 4K video streaming. So when it comes to gaming on a mini PC like this, we're not going to be able to do much from Steam. I mean, there are some 2D games and some older things that'll run pretty well, but if you want to do Minecraft from the Windows Store, maybe Asphalt 9, it'll work out just fine. Here we have the Windows Store version of Minecraft. I'm at 12 chunks, I still have fancy graphics on, and it's running pretty decently. It does drop down below 60, but personally, if I didn't have that frame counter on, I would probably never notice it. Next up, I wanted to test Asphalt 9 real quick. I did have to go into the settings and drop this down to 80% resolution scaling. I also had to swap it from 60 FPS to 30 because we were around 42 and it would dip down. So at 30, still plays pretty decently at 80% resolution scale. Now I'm definitely not telling you to go out and buy one of these mini PCs for high-end gaming, but if you wanted to do some high-end stuff on this, your best bet would be cloud gaming, either using GeForce Now or Stadia. I wanted to test both of them, so first up we have GeForce Now, I'll go with Fortnite here. And I'm going to stick with that wired connection, but keep in mind we do have an Ethernet port on this, and that would be the best way to go with cloud gaming. It's working out really well. I mean, if you've never tried GeForce Now, I would definitely give it a shot. This is Fortnite. We're at Epic Settings here, and it's running over 60. Now, if you don't have a good internet connection, GeForce Now or Stadia really isn't for you. You need a decent internet connection for all of this to work, but there's tons of games that'll be fully playable on a small PC like this. And if I tried to run this natively on the Q1, there's no way I could even get 11 FPS out of this game. Low settings at 720p. So GeForce Now does work out pretty well on this little box. Let's go ahead and move over to Stadia with Cyberpunk 2077. Again, still on my Wi-Fi connection, and we're able to play Cyberpunk 2077 on this little PC. Well, we're basically streaming it from Stadia servers to this mini box. But it does work out really well. And by the way, I don't have a special Stadia controller or anything like that. I'm just using my keyboard and mouse. Gave the deeds of some Militech agent too, but don't know how much help she stands to be. Okay, so when I'm testing these little mini PCs, I always like to keep an eye on the temperature and power consumption. The highest we reached here through all of my tests was 86 degrees Celsius, so we didn't even hit that thermal throttle. I'm sure it could happen if you stress out all four cores and the GPU for longer than 10 minutes, but under normal, everyday use, this will stay under that 95 degrees Celsius thermal throttle limit that they have set in the BIOS. And as for power consumption, it's pretty low. When I'm testing these, I have it plugged into a kilowatt meter connected to the wall. This is total system power consumption. Idle, 4.3 watts. 4K video playback, 9.1. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while stressing out all four cores and the GPU was 14.7 watts. So this thing definitely doesn't burn a lot of juice. So in the end, when it comes to the Q1D, I really wish they would have thrown in a Gemini Lake chip, like a 4125. This is using that older Apollo Lake, and we've seen tons of newer mini PCs with the Gemini Lake chip, specifically the Larkbox Pro, the GMK Nookbox, and even the new Pantera Pico mini PC. I think it's going to be a hard sell to a lot of people given that we're using that older chip, but for what we have here, using that older Apollo Lake, it does perform quite well. It's actually one of the best performing Apollo Lake devices that I've tested. Unfortunately, it seems a little bit late to the game. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this little mini PC or others that ECS does offer, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.